Creo Parametric 5.0 added the capability to have cable stripes in cabling mode. Let's take a look at that. Here I have an assembly on the computer screen. First off, I want to take a couple of these different components and I'm going to change them to transparent. I can go to the model display overflow menu and then choose component display style and transparent. And that way you can see that I've got some connectors inside of those components. I'm going to make a cat six cable, which if you ever have a hard line for an internet connection, that's a cat six cable. It's got two connectors on each end. Uh, or one connector on each end, two connectors. And those are commonly referred to as RJ45 connectors, but I've named mine 8P8C, which is really technically uh, their name. And so I'm going to switch over to Creo Schematics to show you the cable that I'm going to route. Okay, here I am in Creo Schematics. In another video, I showed how to set up an artifact for a cable, and I've routed that cable between the two RJ45 connectors. If you take a look at the labels on the connectors, I've got the different colors for them. And so with the uh, T568 cable, it uses a combination of solid colors and striped wires. And so you can see that it's got white green, white orange, white blue, white brown striped wires in addition to regular green, blue, orange, and brown wires. And so a couple of things I want to note about that other video I did where I set this up. Uh, I actually changed a couple things since then. Let me go to my data table explorer. Let's go to cables over here. Here's the cat six one that I created. I initially accidentally created that as a ribbon cable. So I had to go back and save this out and then change the ribbon to a regular cable spool and then reload the objects. So that's one thing I did. Another thing is when I set up the wires, which I showed in another video, in the names I used for them, I used a forward slash. But the problem is when you read that into Creo Parametric, Creo Parametric doesn't like the forward slashes in the spool names. So I went back and changed them from the slashes for the AS22759 wires and also for the striped wires that I created to just use an underscore. All right, let's export this out. I will go to the file drop down menu. Let's choose export XML and let's see here. We can choose the file that we want to export it to. And I'll use this name over here. We are exporting out to cabling. I'm just going to do the current sheet. There's a bid sheet in here. I could really do the whole design, but everything in here is good. Let's validate XML. No. Invalid exported objects found. That's good. Let's click the OK button and export to XML complete. Now let's head back over to Creo Parametric. All right, before I even go into cabling mode, I'm going to set up those solid colors. If you want your wires to actually use the color, you have to have a corresponding color of that name set up. So let's go to the view tab and I'll go to the appearances drop down menu over here. And so one of the ones I know that I need is a green and the code that I used in Creo Schematics was GRN. And if I search for GRN, I don't have that in here. So let's go create four of those colors. I'm going to choose the appearance manager over here. I'm going to start off with something that looks kind of green. And let me then click the new button. And I'm going to rename this instead of that Pantone name over there to be GRN to match up with the model. Uh, let's see the last thing to do over here. Let me change this. I'm going to change it from this Pantone color to just be 100% green. Let's slide the red and the blue sliders off to the left and then green all the way out to the right. Click the OK button. So now I've got a GRN color that will be used when I route my wires and cables. Let's create the other three colors real quick. All right, so I've got my blue, my red, my green, and my brown set up. And I really should set up all the other different colors, but I'll do that at another point. And then I can append this to my existing appearance dot 
DMT file so that it's automatically read in whenever I launch Creo Parametric. But for the sake of this video, this is good enough. Let me close out of there. So I've got four of the colors set up. Let's now go into cabling mode. I'll go to applications cabling. And the way that you set up your different cable stripe colors is by going to the spools overflow menu and then choose cable stripes. And again, this is new starting in Creo Parametric 5.0. I'm doing this video in Creo Parametric 7.0, by the way. And so there are a bunch of predefined striped appearances for you. So for example, here is a vertical tile unit and then vertical tile percentage, I assume that is. And then we have symmetric couple choices over there then we have some horizontal ones and here are the horizontal tile percentage i guess it is perc this is the one that i like for setting up the stripe cables that i'm going to use today let me show you some of the other ones that you have in here again you can do the symmetric ones there's one set up for ground here we have vertical tile unit tape you know, a few other tape ones in here. So they have these ones that you can start off with. And so I'm going to pick that one that I like. And then I am going to go to this drop down list and I'm going to copy it. And then you can give it whatever name that you want. And again, you want it to correspond to the name of the color that you set up in Creo Schematics. And so let's set up the first one was white dash GRN for green. And then if you want to, here we have our base color, which is white. And then here you can change the secondary color and you've got the colors in here. And then you can go to more colors and I can say, hey, if I want this color to be as green as green can be, I can do that as well. So that is good for the white green color. Then with this one selected, I'm going to repeat this process to make my blue color. So again, I'll go to the overflow and choose copy. And then WHT-BLU for the name. And then let's change this. Let's go to more colors over here. And let's have this completely blue, zero green. Click the OK button. And let's repeat that a couple more times. Let's copy that. And this will be white-ORN for orange. And let's go to this and I'll get, you could use one of the theme colors if you want to, or you could just create your own color, which I'm doing from more colors. And I looked up on the internet what the RGB combination is for orange. And so we'll have 165 for the green component and then zero blue. And they say that that's orange. All right, that's good. Let's see, you can see I've got them down at the bottom over there. And then from the drop down list over here, let's copy this one last time. And this will be for the white brown color. And let me once again go to more colors. And brown is going to be 165, 42, and 42. Which, if you take a look at it, it looks really reddish to me, but they say that this is brown. All right, so that's good for my different wires in here. Uh, you can click the OK button. It's going to say, hey, do you want to save the changes that you made to the striped appearance? Yes, let's do that. And I'm going to save this out to where I have some cabling stuff in here. And later on, I will change a config.pro option to point to that particular file that I have. All right, so we are in cabling over here. You'll notice that most of the icons are grayed out. Let's start out by creating our harness. And for the file name, I'm going to call this Cat6 since I'm creating a Cat6 cable. Let's click the OK button. So there I have my harness and it is active. Now let's bring in that XML file. I will hit the import button. We're going to import a Creo Schematics file. I'm going to import the entire XML. And let me navigate to, where the heck did I store that out to? Oops, wrong one. There it is, there is my XML file. I will hit the open button. It says, hey, the CAD file, the XML file was read in successfully. All right, let's done return and done out of there. Let me just do a quick comparison. I'm gonna check everything in the compare menu and then choose execute. And so here it says, okay, 
cable's not routed, this is the name that's going to give it. Hey, we need to designate our connectors and we need to create our cable spool. Let's start off by creating our cable spool. So I'll go to spools, drop down, and then spools. And I'm going to create. And since I read in an XML file, I can create from logical. And this is the only cable definition that was in the XML file. Let's hit done return. And then if I choose to edit that one file, here you can see I've got the electrical parameters dialog box. And here's the information that was set up in there. Let's change the radio button to conductor so I can expand this over here. You can see, all right, here are the individual fibers in the cable. And here you can see the type and the color code and the color name, name format for the name of it, all the other good information, wire gauge, name of the spool, etc. All right, let's cancel out of here. Didn't actually make any changes to it because the definition was fine. Now let's designate our two connectors. I will go to the auto designate command and from the XML file, it wants two different connectors. I'll select the first line in the table over here and it highlights the two components that have the corresponding name for the component that was in the schematic and the XML file. Let me go over here and I'm just going to Query select, so I get to select this part over here. And now, if I hit the apply button, it'll automatically designate the other one by process of elimination. There are only two parts with the name 8P8C. Once I designated one, the other one was selected by process of elimination. All right, that's good. Let's click the OK button over here. And so I've got my spool, I've got my components designated let's route us some cables oh before i do that let's go to the drop down list and choose tree columns whenever i am cabling i like to add an additional column for the designation uh, let's see make a little wider click the ok button and so there you can see that we have our spool our designated components Right now, our harness part is empty. Let's create and route our cable. I'll go to the Route Cables button, and then I'll use the binoculars to search for the cables from the XML file. Let's select it, add it to the column on the right, click the OK button, and there you can see a preview of the routing. It's using Simple Route because I don't have a network to find in here. You can see the different fibers that were created over there. Everything here looks good. Let's click the OK button. And then our wires are routed. And you can see that they have picked up all the individual colors. Right now they're a little close to each other. It's hard to tell the individual wires that are in here. Also right now, it is also penetrating through here. So let's do some refinement to the routing. Let me go to thin line mode, and that way I can then figure out, hey, which I always like to start with fiber number one. Is it this one? This is, yeah, that's it. Let's select this one and then I can right mouse click and hold and choose to insert locations. And normally I'd have some clips on here or something, but I'm just going to pick starting off, just pick a point right on the surface over here to adjust the routing. Then for the next location, I do a lot of use direction. Let me pick this to use as the direction. And then you can refine the length out here if you want. And then for the next location, then I'll change back to on and just pick a point over here. And then next location, use direction. And again, I'll pick an edge from this part. And maybe a little bit less. I'm just eyeballing it. Next location, on, and then pick a point over here. And then next location, use direction. Let's get it out straight over here and then it bends right into the connector so I like that routing let's hit the check mark over here and right now I've only routed the one individual cable oh I don't like that point over there 
let me select it and edit definition and just drag it so it's coming like right, right straight sort of out of the connector that's good hit the check mark and now for the other fibers in the cable I can just select them using the control key and here it says seven selected so that's the right number and then I can right mouse click and hold and from the mini toolbar I can choose reroute and then I can say hey let's have all those wires go to this location over here and follow along the path all the way to this other location and so now they're all adjusted for their location let's hit the check mark and again just so you can see them sort of spread out uh, individually I'm gonna change the properties for a couple of these location points so let's start off by selecting this one over here and then edit definition if you go to the options tab you can change the grouping and by default the grouping is round but I'm gonna change it to flat over here just so it spreads out all the individual ones let's hit the check mark and I'm gonna edit definition of this other location over here I'm actually gonna move it over adjust it so again it's a little straighter there we go and again go to options over here and change the grouping from round to flat and hit the check mark and so now when I go to the shaded mode there you can see the wires let me get should I can turn off my pre-selection highlighting for a moment if you go to file options and then selection here's where you can turn off pre-selection highlighting that way when I'm moving my mouse over here it's not pre-highlighting that other surface and there you can see the different cable stripes in here so you can clearly see we've got a green wire and then next to it looks like a white and orange and then I've got blue next to white and blue I mean they're kind of thin so it's kind of hard to tell a little bit this one over here I don't know what color that was that I created. Is that my orange? Here I have the, the white and the brown, which looks kind of red, and there's my brown, and then there is the white and the green. So that's how you can use cable stripes in Creo Parametric when you are routing your wires and cables. And as we saw in here, you go to the drop down for cable stripes. There are a lot of different ones that you can use inside of here. You can choose how many stripes that you want. You'll notice that you can have multiple, as many, well, I don't know how many you can have, but you can definitely have uh, quite a few different colors in here and you can control the orientation and the shape of them. and. Uh, how big they are and whatever get your stripes exactly the way that you want them to be and there are a couple new config.pro options starting in Creo Parametric 5.0 for supporting this I'll go to file options to show them to you go to the configuration editor let's hit the find button and I'm going to type in the word stripe which I know appears in the options and so you have cable stripes file and so this is the default file that it uses. It's located in your Creo Parametric load point. I had saved out my file with those other different options. So if I wanted to, I could browse to where I stored it. I think I dumped it out to here. I could use this one instead. And that way I'm using my own custom cable stripes file. This other option over here is for administrators. They can prevent other people from making their own cable stripes file. So for example, if you wanted to restrict people to just using your company standards, you could set this to no and maybe have that in the company config.sub file. So this is good. Oops, let me forgot to hit the add change. Let's select it add change let's close out of here and normally I would save my config profile but I'll do that at some other point and that's how you can use cable stripes I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded thank you very much